Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for upper intermediate English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B2 English Story The Heirloom Juniper James was a bit of an oddball. She liked to play golf, read science fiction, bake bread and tend to her worm farm. She didn't really fit in with her classmates. She wasn't bothered about ballet or Minecraft or silly programs on the telly. She liked to be outside exploring, digging up her garden and playing with her dad's metal detector. She was a free spirit. Ever since Juniper could walk, she wanted to be outside. She was forever exploring her parents' vegetable patch and was often found hiding behind the shed, covered in mud and pulling up worms from the soil. When she wasn't causing mischief in their back garden, she was stealing her dad's fishing maggots and looking at them through her grandma's magnifying glass. She was inquisitive, to say the least. Seeing Juniper's natural curiosity in all things wild, her parents signed her up for a summer school at a local garden centre when she was seven years old. The experienced landscape gardeners explained how fertilisers worked. They showed the children how to tend the plants and how to care for their gardens during the winter months. Juniper was immersed. She enjoyed the course so much that she won the coveted Young Gardener of the Summer Award. Some of the other attendees were annoyed as she was the youngest by far but her natural talent outshone the rest. When the summer was over and the winter came, Juniper's interests started to swiftly change from planting to digging things up. On Saturday mornings, she always dragged her parents out to the local farmer's fields and walked for hours with their metal detector. She never found anything more than some old coins, a toothbrush and a dog's skeleton. She always hoped for the day when she would stumble across an ancient shrine or some Roman treasure. It never happened, unfortunately, but it didn't stop her. Her interest in all things outdoors, history and excavation grew throughout her teenage years. It got to the point that in her history GCSE class, she knew more about local history than her teachers. Every summer throughout her teenage years, Juniper's parents would send her to different summer camps around the country where she would learn more about archaeology and the weird and wonderful things that had happened in England's past. They were dubious about sending her at first, but it was something she really wanted to do. They told her that if she wanted to go, then she also had to contribute to the cost. These camps are not cheap. Juniper got a part-time job when she was 14, sweeping up hair and making cups of tea at her local hairdressers. She didn't particularly enjoy it, but it helped her to save up to go to the summer camps. When Juniper reached the age of 18, she decided to take a year out and she gained an internship role at one of the summer camps she had previously participated at. She loved it. She helped to organise digs, trips, guest speakers, accommodation and catering. She learnt a great deal she also finally made some like-minded friends. She had never been lonely and had a handful of pals at school, but they were never really interested in her latest finds from her digs or the books she was reading. She often found that she was almost a different version of herself around them. 
At the internship, Juniper made a varied group of friends from across the country. She was lucky that the internship was located just 15 miles from her parents' house, so she could drive there. She had an old banger of a car, but she didn't mind, as it got her from A to B with relative ease. Taking part in the internship helped to solidify Juniper's plans. She wanted to be an archaeologist. She was aware of how difficult the job was, how it didn't pay well, and how she might end up becoming a history teacher. But at least she would be able to pursue her passion and study the topics she was interested in for three years. She spoke to her managers at the summer camp about her options and they gave her realistic advice as to what she could do. In the end, she opted to apply for a couple of courses. Whatever was meant to be would happen. If she didn't gain a place, she hoped that perhaps she could move on to an assistant position at the summer camp and continue to work there. Most of her school friends had already moved away to study. She didn't really miss them, especially now she had made such great friends at the camp. The thought of staying there for a few more years, if she needed to, didn't worry her. Juniper's manager was her reference for her applications and advised her what to put in her personal statement. The prospect of being able to take part in organised digs and travel the world as part of her course excited Juniper more than anything ever had. She hoped that by the end of it, she'd be able to secure a job. Going to university in England can be incredibly expensive and Juniper was concerned about costs. She saved as much of her intern wage as she could. Juniper was successful and got on to her course of choice. Her application was impeccable and the fact that she had gained some relevant experience made her stand out from the crowd. She shared the news with her family and they were all overjoyed. When she told her manager, they gave her a big hug and announced it to the rest of the team. They were sad to see her go, but knew she was doing the right thing. Juniper was delighted when her manager offered her a part-time job while she studied. They explained that they could work her hours around her lectures. Juniper jumped at the chance. She couldn't imagine not being part of the camp community anymore. Plus, she had made such great contacts that could potentially help her in her future career. After all, being an archaeologist is all about taking part in digs and being up to date with what is happening and where. Juniper was determined to make her long-awaited dream a reality. That weekend, to celebrate, she drove her mum and dad to the coast and they took their metal detectors. The thrill of hearing the beep when they'd found something never went away for Juniper. She walked up and down the beach, swaying the detector in front of her. The tide had just gone out and sometimes it left treasures on the beach. Suddenly, Juniper's detector started beeping like crazy. She shouted over her parents, and they used their little plastic buckets and spades that they'd bought from the beach shop to start digging. It wasn't quite the excavation Juniper had dreams about, but it was just as fun. They didn't need to dig very deep into the sand. There it was, in all its glory. Juniper pulled out of the wet sand a beautiful necklace and on it what appeared to be a large emerald surrounded by diamonds. 
It looked like it was at least a hundred years old. She had never seen anything so beautiful or delicate. I wonder who this belonged to, she gasped. They put the necklace in the bucket and decided to take it home and clean it up. Juniper couldn't believe her luck. As a child, she got excited when she found old coins, and she still did. But this was something else. She knew this necklace was something special. She consulted her many books about jewellery and did some research into the area where they had found the necklace. Ten years prior, an old house had collapsed into the sea due to the cliffs slowly corroding away. The house had previously been home to a wealthy family consisting of a lord, a lady and their two daughters. Juniper suspected that the necklace was from the house. What if it was a family heirloom that got left behind? The next day, on her lunch break, Juniper drove to a local antiques and jewellery shop. The specialist confirmed her suspicions. The necklace's pendant was constructed of diamonds and an emerald and was approximately 150 years old. Finally, she had found something with an interesting history. It hadn't yet crossed her mind how much the necklace could be worth. Juniper was purely interested in where the necklace had come from. The specialist found a small inscription on the back of the pendant. It simply read E.D. Who was E.D.? That night, she went to work investigating the mysterious necklace. She found a website that detailed the history of the house on the cliff, which was now no more. It turned out that the lady of the house back in the mid-1850s was called Elizabeth Dennington. Could she have been the mysterious E.D.? Juniper managed to find some contact details for the family. They now lived in London and had an estate office that managed their correspondence. She decided to write them a letter and included several photographs of the necklace. She wasn't sure if she would hear back from them, but in the meantime, she took the necklace to the bank for safekeeping and continued with her life. Just after Juniper started her course at university, she received a phone call from her mother. This always concerned her, because she only ever called her when she was angry, upset, or something bad had happened. Luckily for Juniper, this time it was good news. You've received a letter from London in a very fancy envelope. Juniper knew who it was from. She couldn't concentrate on her afternoon lectures as all she could think about was getting home and opening the mysterious letter. After the lecture, her course mates asked her if she wanted to join them for dinner. She didn't want to miss an opportunity to make new friends, so she went but all evening her mind was elsewhere. She arrived home just after 9pm and went straight to the letter. She opened it carefully, making sure not to damage the beautiful paper too much. Inside was a long, handwritten letter. The handwriting was exquisite. It was from Lady Diana Dennington, she was a relative of the late Elizabeth Dennington and included in the letter some photographs of her wearing the family's prized necklace. Juniper showed her parents the letter. Then she revealed to them the invitation to meet Lady Diana in London in two weeks. They were to join her at a members-only club in Mayfair where she wanted to be reunited with her beloved necklace. 
She had even enclosed train tickets for the family. Well, we have to go. She sent the tickets, Juniper's dad joked. Juniper sat on the sofa in shock. This is exactly why she loved finding treasures and learning about the past. She couldn't believe this was happening. She went straight upstairs and figured out what she would wear for the trip. And then she promptly wrote a response to Lady Diana, accepting her offer. She couldn't wait to meet her. The day of the trip to London arrived. Juniper's dad went to the bank and picked up the necklace and they made their way to the train station. They were delighted to find out that they had first class tickets so they could read the papers and enjoy free food and drink on the train. It was a real treat. Once they arrived in London, they decided to get a taxi to the club. They were worried about carrying the necklace around too much as they suspected it was worth a lot of money. Their taxi pulled up outside a stunning Georgian building with big windows and a security guard stood at the door. They walked up and said their name. They were instantly permitted entry. This was like nothing Juniper or her family had ever experienced how the other half lived. The receptionist took their coats and led them up two flights of stairs through to a stunning restaurant. The ceiling was covered in flowers and plants and the walls had intricate paintings from floor to ceiling. Juniper and her parents were mesmerised. They turned a corner and there was Lady Diana Dennington. She was looking out of the window and was incredibly regal. She stood up as soon as she saw the family and welcomed them with open arms. They sat and talked for hours about the family, about the house on the cliff and what Lady Diana did in her day-to-day -day life in London. Now much of the family's money had gone but she managed their extensive art collection and she was also proprietor to over 250 dwellings across the seaside town where she had once lived. When Lady Diana saw the necklace again, it brought tears to her eyes. Her family lost so many of their heirlooms when the cliff corroded and the mansion fell into the sea and now she was reunited with one of her favourite pieces. She told Juniper and her parents how she had seen both her mother and grandmother wear this necklace on special occasions and that it meant a great deal to her to be reunited with it again. To her, it was priceless. Some of Juniper's friends told her she was crazy for not selling the necklace for thousands of pounds but Juniper wanted it to go back to its rightful owner. Meeting Lady Diana was a wonderful experience and put even more fire in her belly to pursue her chosen career within archaeology and history. Juniper would remain in contact with Lady Diana for many years. She may have returned a piece of exquisite jewellery, but she had also gained a friend in the most unlikely of places. Have you ever found something special? Tell us in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. See you soon.